Maya, mi shedle, yo ho ti ni a ya yena kakai salati. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Look unto your feet when the pressure's on. Look unto your God when the enemy tries to come in. Look to your God and know and understand that all things are possible to them that believe. Don't go rushing about. Don't try to figure it out. Trust in the Lord your God, for joy is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that joy is coming. And Father, may we rejoice in the joy that is coming from your throne room of grace. Praise God. Know who the purpose of your life is His pleasure. We were created for His pleasure. And you know what brings pleasure to the heart of God? If we lead a life of purpose. So I want us to think about what is your purpose? What is your purpose here? Are you just here by accident? You're just flying through. What is your purpose on life? We are here for his pleasure. We are here to point others towards Jesus, aren't we? Too often we're held back by our thought life, by the circumstances around us, you know, by carnal thoughts, by our own pride. Of course, none of us here have any of that, do we? No. I see that Matt is totally in agreement. How can I live a life of purpose? In one short sentence, how can I live a life of purpose? You know, every morning when we get up, it could be your last day on earth. I'm not holding it up high enough. Oh, thank you very much. John is also the sound man. <laughs> Can I live a life of purpose? I want to give you one little key. Of course, there's many. Accept what is. Too often, we fight against negative circumstances that are against us. Often, Jesus just sailed through them. Think about it. Think about it. Sometimes they are there so that we might grow in stature in Christ Jesus. Accept what is. Sometimes you can't change the things of the past, can you? Sometimes you can't even change the, the situation that you're in. And we can spend a lot of energy just fighting against the situation we're in. So accept what is. Let go of what was. I can remember years ago, because I had quite a bad past, I can remember my old mentor saying to me many times, Rancy, let go. And I'd think, I wish she'd tell me how. <laughs> and I battled that for years because the things of the past would torment me you know and you get things like unforgiveness and and bitterness and self-pity rising up and you gotta fight those things and and you know I used to come to church and look around in the church and think why wasn't I born like that person why did I have to be born in my situation And that took a lot of letting go. Letting go. How, how do you let go of 
those things. Well, the first thing I found to do was, the moment I started thinking about it, because it all starts up here, doesn't it? Maybe triggered off with a feeling. Well then, you know, we have to cast down those things. Who knows, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, you know that's a hard thing to do, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? You put your foot on it and it just wriggles out from underneath and comes up again. <laughs> that's why I walk with a limp. <laughs> no, we have to cast them down. We have to, or sometimes I found it was easier to turn your thoughts to something else. You know, instead of, yeah, go and do something else. Sometimes you have to do in order to think differently. Like, go and do the gardening, go and scrub the floor. Oh, I don't suppose you'd scrub the floor, hey James? No. <laughs> do something else anyways. Okay, so we've got to accept what is, let go of what was, and have faith in our future in Christ. How did I do that? My constant prayer was help me believe. Help me believe, Lord. Help me truly believe. And that's where some of us fall flat on our face. Because sometimes we can say the words. Sometimes we can sound Pentecostal. Sometimes we can sound like we've got it all together. But what is going on in our hearts? Let's face the truth. Because the truth isn't something. Beloved, the truth is someone. His name is Jesus. As we come to the table today, let us remember, let's not play Pentecostal games. Let's not treat this thing lightly. In the Christian church today, you know, I've been to churches where communion is a two-minute thing. Let's get it over and done with before the sermon comes. Communion is what it's all about. Amen. Because without that, we wouldn't have church. Let's remember to be honest with ourselves and with him as we come around the table. Let's cast off all the garments of pretense. All the, I've got it together because I'm a Christian. I'm an overcomer because I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a something else. Let's come humbly as children around the table knowing that we need this table every week in order to keep going for the next week. Well, I don't know about you, but I do. I'll tell you how much I need this table. When I've been going through a period of deep brokenness, like when something tragic has happened in my family, I found myself on my knees taking communion at one period in my life for a whole day nearly every hour because I just couldn't breathe for the next hour. He is our all. He is our everything. And at the end of our lives, he is our only thing. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you paid the price for us to come before the throne of grace and not the throne of judgment. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us the grace to repent, to let go, to face the future with you. Thank you, Lord, that because of your broken body, you brought healing to every part of our being, not just our physical. And with your blood, you gave us forgiveness of sin. Lord, thank you doesn't seem enough. 
but from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, thankfulness is all that we've got to give you for so great a sacrifice. So with grateful hearts, with humble hearts, let us eat and drink, remembering he is our future. Amen.